Hey there, it's Jim from Janku, and I was recently looking for a way to track my dev hours as I'm going and working on my coding projects, partially because I'm actually looking to build a, a SaaS application that is related to this, but also because I find it very interesting to actually be able to keep track of mine and my team's hours more effectively to actually build these through to our clients. Um, so one project that kept coming up in my search was this walk a time project here. Now, this is a, a backend application with a lot of charts and graphs to actually get some metrics on your dev team and their productivity and what they're working on, different languages they're using, etc. cetera. Um, and there's actually kind of an interesting aspect to this is they have a bunch of open source plugins for their application. So for all these different editors and applications, they have a way to track through these and then it sends data back to their dashboard. So I found that pretty interesting. In our case, we use VS Codium often. So this is the open source fork of VS Code. Actually, it's not really a fork, it's just a mirror. It's the same code base, but it takes out the telemetry and, and different things that Microsoft is inserting in their binaries. And so we use VS Codium. So essentially this VS Code plugin over here should work effectively the same way uh, with our editor. So they have this um, page dedicated to the VS Code plugin. They also have their GitHub page here if you want to take a look at that. Um, if I come here to the VS Code, walk a time plugin here. So we could download this into our application and this would feed data to the dashboard on the walkatime.com uh, website. You'd have to sign up for an account. I believe they have a couple different versions here, um, potentially a free version, let's see, pricing free, and then there's some paid versions with more features and then there's some team versions um, beyond that. Now, that's all good and well, but I found this other project that is kind of interesting called the Wakapi or Waka API. I'm not sure how they want to pronounce it, but this is a free and open source version basically of the Waka Time uh, dashboard. So you could self host this. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, here's some uh, of its features here. Um, and the thing that really intrigued me about this is when I looked at the GitHub page, it's built in Go. You know, I'm a big fan of Go. Um, if people don't really understand why that, I love the simplicity of Go, but also I love the fact that you can basically compile Go applications to a binary that you can then simply put on a server and spin up a systemd service to run it. So you don't have to worry about your own uh, web servers oftentimes and other software that's needed to run an application. You don't need a programming language installed. And so it just really simplifies things. So I get really excited when I see Go's, Go based applications um, because they just, to me, they're a lot easier to run. The service is going to be a lot easier and the overhead is going to be a lot lower. So I thought this was really cool. And this I was interested in trying to spin this up and taking a look at this and seeing if we could get this running on our own. And um, especially since this has a SQLite backend by default, I believe. I'm not sure where it says it in the documentation. Um, yeah, so this is the default. So that makes it really easy to set this up. Um, they have some instructions with Docker and other things, but if it's just a Go application, I think we could probably set this up without even having Docker at all. Just download the native binary, set up SQLite and the optimal races. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here. Um, another thing that uh, they have in the instructions here for setup was saying um, that you have to do the client setup here so that this uh, Wakapi relies on the open source Waka Time CLI tool. So this is the, the Waka Time CLI. Now, the thing about the CLI tools here is that um, you see that the command, this is the command line interface CLI for the Waka Time applications. And this is all of their text-based editor plugins use this. So basically if you're using the VS Code uh, plug in here. I believe it's behind the scenes actually implementing the Waka Time a CLI program, which is actually also written in Go. Hey, isn't that nice? And um, so in our case, if we just download the, the VS Code plugin, I'm hoping that we don't actually need to interface with this uh, Waka Time CLI client directly. I think we can actually just configure it through the plugin, which would be really nice. Um, but I'm not sure because I'm not sure if the plugin allows you to basically point it to something custom versus pointing it to the Waka Time server. Can we point it to the Wakapi uh, ourselves? I'm not positive we can, uh, but that's something I found interesting. And you can even see here, they say in the usage, normally you don't need to use the Waka Time uh, CLI directly unless you're building a new plugin for like a new editor or something along those lines. Um, usually you can actually just use the plugin directly itself. So that's what we'll try to do. And over here in my VS Codium, I am going to go to my extensions and Actually, the funny thing is I, um, I found this uh, using a different, um, uh, a different search. I think I was using, I can't remember, it was um, DevTime, I think is another plugin for another service. Uh, and yeah, it was popping up here and VS Codium didn't have a DevTime uh, related plugin, but Waka Time is appearing here. So this is the plugin that we wanna use here. So I'm gonna come here, I'm going to install this and you can see that they have some configuration instructions here as well. 
So we'll install this plugin, and then we can come back to this. So, okay, so enter the API key. We actually don't have our API key yet, so we're, we're gonna wanna go back over here to our uh, application, this uh, Waka API, or the Wakapi application, and we're going to try to do this setup here. So one thing I'm going to do, I might actually skip some of these instructions because we don't need to compile from source since they have releases up here. We don't really need to introduce Docker. Um, I don't know if I really need to use a, a separate program to manage our um, binaries. I think we might be able to just run this directly. So I'm gonna come to the releases tab on the GitHub page here. And let's see here. So releases, I'm gonna go to the latest release. And what I wanna do is I want to come here and get the Linux release. So we will do the AMD release here. We'll download this. And then if we come here and we open up our downloads folder, we have this here. So let's just extract this here. Actually, do you know what? I've been having some trouble when I extract um, using Nautilus. Uh, this is the Nautilus uh, uh, file browser. I've been having some trouble where sometimes files go missing. So it might be a little safer if I come here and in my command line, I just unzip this like this. So unzip the wakapi um, package there, and then I can see uh, some of the files here. So it looks like we have the, the binary and we have the config. So it's pretty pretty simple. So you'd probably want to put this in a subfolder, um, not just randomly sp sprawled in your downloads folder if you're going to do that again, but for our purposes, that should be fine. Let's actually see if we can execute wakapi and see what ha happens. Okay, so it says that it's, it's listening on this port um, for our local host. Let's see if I can come here and actually open this up see what happens okay so wow that was that was pretty quick and painless so this is running locally on our computer and this is the dashboard it actually looks exactly like the wakapi site it's almost identical you can't really see the difference here so that's pretty cool um, and then we could come in here and I'm sure we could create a login on our local and let's just take a look at what that looks like I'll just do J test and my password will be jtest for now. And I will sign up. Okay, uh, jtest. And oh, it gave me a little avatar automatically. That's kind of cool. Um, so it looks like this is optional. Email address is optional for now. I'll skip it. And I'll just put a test password in here again. And I'll create my account. Oh, it has to be a little stronger than that. Let me try this. Okay, so so the password I use is not very secure. Um, I'm not going to be keeping this instance around. I'll probably, if I wanna use this project, I'll deploy it to a server and I'll, I'll set a different password. So I'm not too worried about it for now. Um, we don't have to save this because we're not going to use this again like that. Okay, so the account was created successfully. We're still on the dashboard page here, so we probably have to log in. So let me do my password for that I just set for the account and then it's giving me the warning again okay we don't need this it looks like now we are um, in the dashboard so I can come here and it's giving me a welcome screen here um, and then it's some setup instructions so this is kind of cool so it says download the um, walk a time plugin for your IDE so this is a list of plugins we already started downloading the VS code one we did that directly in VS Codium itself and then step two we want to set our um, configuration file. So there's a, so this tilde um, character represents your home directory on your computer. And then saying there's a hidden dot file here, this walkatime.cfg. And basically what we want to do is we want to add settings like this. So we want to add settings for our API URL and um, our API key. And then we can uh, start coding and get back here. So that sounds like a really easy setup. Um, now I'm wondering if we even have to, I mean, I could edit this file directly in Vim and set it directly, but I'm curious if I can just set this directly in our VS Code settings here. So I'm gonna grab my VS Code. So it says, enter your API key. So let's just go back here. Our API key is this key here. So I'm gonna copy this. Um, hopefully you can see that, I can make it a little bigger. Um, just increasing my browser size. So I'm copying my API key here. This is the second one. I'm going to Control C and then I'm gonna go back here and I'll just press Control V. You see up here, I'm, pa I'm pasting at the top, enter my API key and I'll press enter. Okay, so it um, apparently said that, but I think this is probably by default, this is trying to go to the walkatime.com server. So I might wanna um, actually come in here um, 
and look at the settings. So I'm going to go to extension settings. Um, okay. So uh, here is our place where we set our um, API key. I'm not sure if through these settings, I, if I can actually set this separately. Um, yep. Uh, let's see if I can, is there a way to switch to like a JSON view of this? Hmm. I'm not sure. So I'm not sure if there's a good way to um, change that settings through this interface here, unfortunately. Um, so what I can do, so instead, uh, just for the interest of time, I'll do a little looking at this. There might be a way to just do this easier through the interface for folks who are a little less familiar with the command line. But what we can do for now is we'll open up a new terminal. Uh, I'll make this a little bigger so we can hopefully see what's going on here. And um, let me go back to this. And I'm basically going to copy all these settings here. Um, so my, my API URL, so this is saying go to your local host URL. If you deploy this on a server somewhere, this would be whatever your domain name uh, is. Or if you're using an IP directory, you pr could probably do that too. Um, I'm going to copy these settings here. And actually, you know, I'm going to first make sure I get this file name right. So I'm going to vim this file. This basically opening a text editor. So I'm going to neovim this. And I'm going to go inside here. And you can see that it set my API key already. So this actually, these are the settings that were set through the VS Codium. Uh, interface so I actually only need to really come here and grab this second part right so this sorry this first part this api url let me grab that and let me just come up here and i'll press o to insert into a new line i'll do Control shift v to paste it and then we have these settings in here and then i can do a colon wq and press press an exclamation point you can see that does a right quit bang at the bottom here and i'll press enter and now we should be up and running and so we have our configuration for our walk of time config set and we have our um, our plugin installed over here. And so now we just have to like spend some time in this editor and do some editing and we could see if it actually um, does any kind of uh, tracking of our time. So I, I don't know uh, what exactly to do at this point. So I'm just gonna copy some things and paste some things, um, uh, make some changes, oops. I'm not really trying to make too much sense of this. Um, new comment. And I'm not sure how fast it picks up on this and hopefully it is listening here. You know, I think there's usually some kind of indication uh, maybe in our tool um, bar here at the bottom. Let me see if we can figure out how that is actually um, uh, being demonstrated. So let's see here. So um, if I look here, so that's the API key. And then it just says we should be synced up. Um, so potentially you could do some debugging. Now I'm trying to see if there's an indicator in here visually. I'm not sure. Let's go back to our project here and see if anything's happening here. I'm going to set this back to normal size. So the setup instructions, I'm going to reload this, see if it, oh, okay. Well, so I, I reloaded it. I just did a control R to refresh and look at this. This is pretty cool. So um, you, you can see that uh, there, there's, a total of three heartbeats. So I think these are actions that have been recorded. The, the project is plenty. That is exactly the project I have over here, my VS Codium. So you can see at the top and the top left there, if you can see it's plenty. Um, and uh, you can see that the language that we're using is Go. It's on a Linux operating system and the, the text editor is VS Code. So that's really great. And you can see some charts here. You can see this is the, the Go chart. So if I started using some other languages, actually here, let me see if I can demonstrate that. Um, I'm gonna go back to my editor and let's go to our file browser and we have some Svelte components in here as well. So let's just like open up uh, a, a head here and let's just say, you know, um, again, uh, comment and I'll save. I'll do, just do a write. Let's see if I, I'm not doing anything right now, but let me reload, see if that, okay. So that's sweet. Wow. That's really cool. You can see that we've done a change in Svelte as well. And it says, um, it looks like we've done, a minute of 43 seconds of uh, Go development, and we've done uh, 11 seconds of Svelte development. That's really, really cool, and it kind of gives us the, the breakdown on the chart there. Everything's in VS Code, everything's in plenty. Um, if we open it up, uh, some other text editor with some other project, we get those projects there as well. So that's that's really cool, and you have a daily activity chart down here as well. Um, now, I just want to do some exploration, so I don't know exactly um, all the features here, but maybe we can take a look together and see what's going on. So I believe this is our dashboard. So if I click this, I assume this takes us to the same place. Yep, the summary page. Now there's some filters at the top. So that's really cool. As you add more projects, you can filter and say, show me just the plenty projects. 
if I did another project, I could filter by that as well. I could so say, show me just the Svelte stuff, and I could click that. Um, uh, and then I think that, uh, uh, what I, I think is happening here, um, no, I'm not sure if that, uh, I, I think basically the total time might have changed to just the Svelte stuff. Let me see again, let me change to go. Mm, no. Um, I'm not sure what the filter here is doing. Uh, uh, and maybe someone who's watching is seeing something I'm not. Um, I would thought that would, would have changed these graphs to just show the, that information there. Uh, am I missing anything here? So it's Svelte versus Go. Um, no, I'm not sure exactly what's happening there. Uh, maybe as I have more data, uh, that would help be helpful. But again, uh, it has something about my machine. So it has my ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Um, my, my computer I've had since 2015. It's been a really reliable computer. Um, and uh, so yeah, it, it, uh, it, it, it's showing that as well. Everything's gonna be obviously on that machine. I'm only using one computer. And then it looks like I, I can do some um, uh, time ranges here. So if I wanted to see just like this last week or today or a, a custom time uh, range here, I can do that as well. That's really cool. This, this all looks like really, really awesome. Um, uh, I'll try to figure out what these filters are and maybe get back to y'all with that either in the comments or uh, making another video. Uh, there's also a leaderboard. So this um, uh, is pretty cool. So our leaderboard is empty. So um, I, I think this is something, and I might have read this somewhere in one of the issues that this actually needs to be configured. So um, uh, I don't know if I need to turn this on in the settings somewhere. Let me see. So if I go to settings, you can see here we have our time zone, we have a password, email address. Okay, let's see data. Um, okay, there's some rules okay that's kind of cool um permissions okay um so opt-in to get listed on the public leaderboard um it shows the aggregated statistics so you know you might not you know some people have mixed feelings about leaderboards of like kind of pitting people against each other especially if you have a developer team i could see you can make the case either way that it could be helpful to have some friendly competition but also could be um, something that some folks don't want to do so um, do we want to participate in the leaderboard? And right now it says no, I could change this to yes. I'm going to say that and I'm going to press save. So now I'm participating in the leaderboard at the very least. So that, that should maybe turn that on. Um, oh, cool. And then you have some public data. So you, wh what do you want public? Do you want um, to share your, your projects, your languages, your editor? So you could say, uh, you know, I'm fine sho showing what language I'm using, you know, show that I use Go and Svelte, but I don't want to share my projects because some of this might be client work, um, et cetera. So I might, I might do something like that and just share my language and that's it. Um, uh, maybe I want to share my OS too. I want to give Linux some love. So I'm going to do that as well. Now, um, this would, you know, if this is just you running it by yourself, this probably doesn't matter too much, but if you have a team or if you're making a public instance of this, then I can see that being really helpful. So that's pretty cool. And then let's go back to our leaderboard. Okay. So yeah, you have me here. I'm number one. Hey, isn't that interesting? Uh, being the only person here. Uh, and then obviously you can do it by language and you see that go is the top here. Go and Svelte are being um, used there. That's pretty cool. Okay, what else do we have here? So we have projects. So this is an overview of all your projects ordered by recent activity, code intensity. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger. I'm even having trouble reading it. My eyes are getting old. Uh, col color intensity indicates the overall activity of the project. That is a project that has been worked on more will have stronger colors. That makes sense, that's really cool. Um, it's kind of like a heat map, it sounds like. Uh, click a project to view project-specific statistics. Please note that this view is cached and thus not may not be perfectly up-to-date. Okay, no projects available yet. So um, we'll have to do a little bit more investigation to see how to actually start up a project. Teams coming soon. Oh, that's very cool. Um, I think I read in the issue queue that one of the things that they, they don't have is the Teams feature, but it looks like this might be something that's coming. I think that's really awesome. And then we have some resources here. Okay, so we can see... Um, this is the GitHub page for uh, this project, and there's, um, oh, it has a Swagger API. Um, I've used this for things like Git has this, so you can actually see the API um, uh, uh, structure uh, and get some helpful hints about it. That's really awesome. Um, and then, let's see, we have Waka Time. So this is the, the that parent project, which I think the developer of uh, Wakapi is actually unaffiliated with the parent project, but this is... This is the um, paid service that you can use, which actually looks really awesome. So honestly, if you don't feel like running this yourself, it seems like a really viable thing to actually use that um, project. And then you can donate to this developer, which I highly suggest doing. Uh, this is a really cool project. I'm, I'm super impressed by um, how advanced this is, um, uh, just out of the box. This is really easy to run and really cool. Um, and I can see my API key and I can log out. So yeah, I think this is, this is pretty awesome. I think this is, um, you know, all I'm gonna show for 
this initial look at it, but I'm hoping that I can do some exploration, um, you know, uh, do some work and find out some new features and maybe make another video on this in the future. But anyways, yeah, thank you for watching and, um, you know, great work to uh, the developers. So this is Ferdinand here. Ferdinand, awesome job. This is uh, really cool. Thanks for making this open source and sharing this with us. Um, honestly, this is the first time I've I've discovered the project and, and even taken a look at it. And it was like really easy to set up and, and get going. So that's really cool. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, see you soon. Bye.